I'm going to cut up this flank steak and marinate it in a bowl, a vacuum bag, and in a vacuum chamber to see if one of those works better than the other two. There's a couple reasons why it might or why it might not. To understand the answers to this question, we have to know two things. First is how does a marinade work? And second is how does a vacuum work? YouTuber Adam Ragusea has the best video I know talking about marinades. It's really good and you should check it out. And in that, he does a test with a marinade that he adds some blue food coloring to. I'm gonna be copying part of his experiment. His experiments were based around testing how far a marinade penetrates into the meat. Even after a good long soak, the blue coloring had barely gotten in through the surface of the meat. But even with the low penetration, the video explains why the marinade is still really beneficial. It causes the flavor to be permanently affixed to the outside of the meat. Yeah, it doesn't go all the way into the middle. It's not the same as like injecting it or anything like that, but that flavor is still there. So even if you were to take it out of the marinade and wash it off thoroughly, you would still have the flavor fixed to the outside of the meat. And acids are a very important part of marinades, as he explained, because they will help the proteins on the outside surface of whatever you're cooking really bind onto those flavors so that they're gonna stay in there and you're going to taste them, which is of course the most important part. So the question is, does a vacuum help with that? There's two kinds of vacuum mechanisms that are often used with cooking. One, most common, is vacuum bags. The other is a vacuum chamber. Now, vacuum bags are very commonly used for sous vide cooking and for marinating. You put the food in, you add the marinade, you pull all the air out, and you let the food soak in the juices. That's what marinating always is, but this time you do it in a bag instead of a bowl. Vacuum chambers are used a lot less, but you can buy them. You can buy a vacuum chamber rotary tumbler that's designed to help marinate your food and tumble it and mix it all at once. And in theory, it makes it better. So I've never tried that myself. That's why I'm doing this experiment today. The vacuum bags, as I said, are often used for sous vide cooking. If you're unfamiliar, that's where you cook things in a bag in a water bath. Very carefully controlled temperature, you get extremely even cooking of your food all the way around, all the way through. In fact, the term sous vide actually means under vacuum. But a vacuum bag doesn't actually put your food in a vacuum the way a vacuum chamber does. Let's take a look at that. This right here is a vacuum gauge. It measures how much air isn't there, really. It goes up to 30 inches of mercury, and where I live, 25, 26 is about a perfect vacuum. If I hook this up to a vacuum sealer, it should pull all of the air out of the bag. So we now have our sealed bag. And you saw that the needle made it up a little ways. It made it up to about negative 15, which is it's a partial vacuum. The real interesting thing is that it didn't go any farther than that and it dropped back down. But the truth is nothing is actually really getting squished. These marshmallows, you can see there's no air in between them, but they're not being crunched or squashed or anything like that. And in fact, most of the reason that we have even this like two and a half inches mercury rating on here is because we have actually formed a very small rigid walled vacuum chamber right here in our hardware. That's pretty much it. These marshmallows have no air around them but nothing is actually squishing on them. In contrast to the vacuum bags, let's see what marshmallows do in our rigid walled vacuum chamber. Marshmallows are fluffy. They're, they're basically tiny little sugar balloons, just thousands or millions of them per marshmallow, really, really small, but they're sealed off, which means that there is air inside them. And if we remove all of the air from outside them, that air inside relatively is now pushing really hard. Watch what it does. It doesn't take long for our marshmallows to start blowing up like balloons themselves. Now, those little tiny sugar balloons I talked about, at some point, those will actually start to rupture. They basically pop, and when that happens, all of the marshmallows start to shrink back down again. So the marshmallows are under low pressure almost a perfect vacuum in there. Right now, the pressure is basically equalized. There's really not a lot of air in either of them. When I let the air back into the chamber, however, all of those marshmallow balloons will sort of partially seal up and the external pressure will now squish them down. Side note, I've done this on a short and I had a lot of people ask me what would happen if I took the top off while it was at low pressure. I can't. There's about 15 PSI over about a square foot holding this down, so I I couldn't move this if I wanted to without a crowbar or something. Let in the pressure back in. There you go, there 
is a marshmallow that's basically had all of the air sucked right out of it. It was very dense and chewy. But does this ability to pull air out of marshmallows mean that we're going to do anything with a marinade? There's actually some precedent for this. Vacuum chambers are used a lot for a process called stabilizing with blocks of wood. You take a block of wood, you put it submerged in some resin, you put it in a vacuum chamber, and you just pull on it for hours. Air actually gets sucked out of the wood because it's semi-permeable. Pull out that air, it's in the resin. When the pressure goes back, all of that resin gets driven down into the wood. So will something like that happen with our steak? Like I said, I am going to recreate part of an experiment that Adam did. I've got some chicken breast and I've got a lime garlic marinade. He did that same flavor. I'm using that because it seems like it's gonna be something really strong compared to the not so strong flavor of chicken breast. So I think if there is more of it, it should be pretty noticeable. And blue food coloring. I'm going to add just a lot of this so that if there is visual, any penetration of the marinade into the meat, we'll be able to see it. This jar is going to become the vacuum chamber for the chicken. Getting a marinade in a vacuum bag can be a little tricky because the machine likes to suck everything out that it can, including liquids. So hopefully we'll be able to stop it before that happens. There you go. Soak it up. The vacuum chamber should pull all of the air out. The, the jar isn't sealed. The lid is sitting on it and there's a little rubber ring around the, the top of the jar. So it should be that all the air gets pulled out and then as soon as air starts getting let back in, that top seal holds itself down and then I can screw the top closed after I open it. So that is chicken in marinade in a vacuum. Pretty sure we've got no air in that. That's what we want in a bowl, in a rigid vacuum, in a vacuum bag. We're gonna give these one hour, then we're gonna cook them up and see how they are. One hour is not really all that lot for most marinades, but the whole point of these tests is to see if they work more effectively than a regular marinade. So an hour is probably a little short for a normal marinade, but maybe it's long enough for a vacuum marinade. Five minutes later. It's been an hour, let's throw everything on the grill, cook it up and see how it is. Also, you may notice there's now a cup in the vacuum chamber. The meat was floating up a little bit, bubbles forming underneath it, so I, I just put a weight on it and pulled the vacuum again. All right, let the air back in. All right, chicken. Mmm, blue, just how I like it. Just sitting and resting chicken. Vacuum bag chicken, vacuum jar chicken. Mmm, mmm, those look good. Same order, sitting and resting steak, vacuum bag steak, vacuum chamber steak. Bright blue, just like mom used to make it. Oof, the most appetizing chicken I've ever made, definitely. Let's take a look at the inside and see how this Look, see if we got any blue getting past the very outer layer. Very first, this is the one that just sat in a bowl, nothing else. Pretty much as expected, we've got, I don't know, maybe a millimeter, maybe half a millimeter in some places, a little more anywhere where there were kind of nooks and crannies in the surface of the chicken, but for the most part, just there on the surface. This is the one that was in the vacuum bag. Hey, now if you ask me, those two are looking mighty similar. However, as I did explain, the vacuum bag doesn't actually lower the pressure at all. So it just lets you use a little bit less marinade than a bowl. Now for our vacuum chamber chicken. If any of them were going to have a, a stronger result, it would be this one, I would expect. I don't think that I'm seeing any difference visually. So it sort of looks like a different level of translucency of the chicken, but it's so minor. Visually is one test, but for a real test, I gotta try it. All right. Just sitting in the bowl. There's a little bit of garlic. There's a little bit of lime. It's not very strong, not bad. This was our vacuum bag chicken. Will it be any different? 
Side-by-side -side comparison, like a blind test, I'd never be able to tell those apart. And finally, our vacuum chamber chicken. I don't know if the flavor is different, but the texture on that piece definitely is different. Not in a good way. I don't like the difference in texture, but it's noticeable. Trying another piece of it. Yeah, it's a weird texture. I don't like it. We've tried our chicken to surprising result. Let's see if the same thing happened on the steak. Sitting in a bowl, only one hour marinade. It's fine. The dominant flavor I'm actually getting, I think it's from the olive oil. That's our just sitting there. Let's try the vacuum bag. I think the same thing. I don't know. It might actually be a little bit stronger. Do we get any significant change with the vacuum chamber? This piece is way more tender. Hmm. So the texture of this whole piece is different. It's, it's not the same as the other two, and these were all cut from the same piece of meat. This whole vacuum chambered piece is noticeably squishier than the other two. Both the steak and the chicken had a different texture after being in the vacuum chamber for an hour. They're like falling apart. Yeah, that is an interestingly noticeably different texture. Based on this experiment, I'm gonna say those might change the texture of your food. Both the vacuum and the tumbling could tenderize. So if that's what you're going for, those could be a good use case. If you're just trying to speed up the marinating process for say barbecuing, well, on steak, maybe you get a little bit more tender, maybe not always. On chicken, I would highly recommend you avoid it because I personally find this vacuumed chicken texture disgusting. I don't know what it did to it, but it feels like almost gummy and it's chewy in a bad way. It doesn't break apart in my mouth nearly the same. So, flavor, not so much. Texture, yes. Up to you whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Are there any other science-based steak experiments you want to see me try? As always, a huge thank you shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon. We could not do these videos without you. If you're interested in joining the Patreon supporters, the link for that is in the description.